My name is Sarah and I'm a holistic nurse dedicated to helping people achieve optimal health and wellness through natural remedies and holistic practices. Today I'm going to share with you how to create your very own herbal medicine cabinet and I'll also show you how to make elderberry syrup. Let's get started. As a holistic nurse, I firmly believe in treating the whole person and not just covering up symptoms. Herbal medicine, with its emphasis on natural ingredients and personalized treatment, is a perfect example of how to do this. In this video, I'm going to discuss the benefits of herbal medicine, explore how to select and store your herbs, and even show you how to make a simple elderberry syrup that you can make easily at home. Some of the benefits of using herbs as herbal medicine is going to be that they're natural ingredients, fewer side effects typically, and a lot more cost effective. I'm sure if you are someone who is taking medication or know someone who is taking medication, they generally have a hard time affording it every single month, especially in today's inflation. The main benefit that I see as a nurse is the fact that it comes from a holistic approach and it typically focusing on the underlying cause of an illness rather than just treating the symptoms, which is what today's medical model generally does. They don't generally want to get to the root cause of your symptoms. They're usually just going to tell you to slap a pill or a bandage on it and send you about your day. Theoretically, you could do the same thing with herbal medicine. However, it's not going to work as well. Using herbs on a daily basis can also be very, very nourishing for your body and help get you to optimum health. Let me know in the comments what's drawing you to building your own herbal medicine cabinet. I started mine several years ago and I've never looked back and as you can see it just keeps growing and growing and growing and I just keep learning and finding new ways to implement these wonderful herbs into my daily routine with me and my family. I'm going to show you some of the most common herbs that you probably already have in your kitchen and may not even think of them as medicinal and then I'm also going to show you a few more herbs that I strongly recommend that you get familiar with, but you may or may not already have them. So these are my top herbs that I always have on hand, and I think actually the majority of them I now currently grow in my garden, except for cinnamon. Can't do cinnamon. So, but for cinnamon I have different kinds. So I have the, the sticks, Sticks make it a lot easier to tell when it's actually been utilized rather than the chips. So I have um, these chips and then I have these chips in just different containers. Obviously I have powdered cinnamon as well for that I use for culinary purposes. Cinnamon is antiviral, antiseptic, and antifungal and is often indicated for colds and flus. It is a mild amenagogue, making it useful for women experiencing painful menstruation. And because of its stimulating and warming properties, it is used to boost vitality and aid in circulation and clear congestion. It is well used for gastrointestinal ailments such as bloating and sluggish digestion. I could grow ginger, but I am not currently growing ginger. So this is dry ginger root. And then this is part of a fresh ginger root. So I, I utilize both. When this is in season or easily available, I use this. If I'm out, then I will go to the dried as my backup. Or if I'm, if I sold a product um, on my website that actually has ginger in it, I will use dry ginger root because I'm not going to be shipping off fresh ginger. Probably not the best. Fresh ginger is a potent antiviral and antibacterial, which is helpful in treating influenza, colds, and both bacterial and viral gastroenteritis. It is most popular known to be used to relieve nausea, vomiting, and motion sickness. Studies have shown it is a rival anti-nausea drug for chemotherapy and without their side effects. Studies have also shown that it is a potent anti-inflammatory, which is effective as ibuprofen. So, but I think the majority of the rest of this I am currently growing in the garden. So as you'll see, some of these are kind of getting low. I'm bringing stuff in and I'm dehydrating it myself and that way I'm utilizing it that way. 
So for example, comfrey. And then this is, so this is what I, I purchased from Mountain Rose. And this is from my garden this last summer. There's actually, I have a, I actually have a short on here. If you wanna, I'll link above of me harvesting it while very pregnant. But you just take the leaves, you dehydrate them, you put them in any container. This is an old artichoke jar. I absolutely love these, but I also don't spend the time to get rid of the paper. So this is really helpful. And then also having it in the garden to utilize at pretty much any time allows you to go out there and pick a fresh one and make a poultice with it. You can put it on a wound that way and you, you get fresh properties as opposed to this dried properties. Comfrey has been used for generations to aid in the healing of injuries. It is an, an herb with a slight astringent quality. Comfrey has important minerals needed for healing, but it is also contains allotone, a substance that stimulates cell growth. And because of this, it is not advised to apply to a broken bone if it's suspected until after it has been ruled out. Oregano, very popular in the kitchen, very easy to grow in the garden. Again, once I am out of this, I will be utilizing what's in the back. It's just more sustainable that way. Like I said, you have the option of fresh or dry. Oregano is a powerful antifungal, antimicrobial, and expectorant. It is useful for respiratory infection and your GI system. It is also used for fungal infections, cough, tonsillitis, bronchitis, asthma, and chest congestion. Oregano should be used sparingly and in low quantities while pregnant and the essential oil can become toxic to your liver. Just make sure to take a break with it. These are my elderberries. I do actually have some elder elderberry plants in the back. Um, they're not producing too much. They're still kind of small and I do have different varieties for cross-pollination purposes so they actually do grow berries. Um, this is how I generally keep it. It's just I'm running low and I want to be out of this before I add the new bag to it just to make sure I am cycling things out properly. I get this off of like Amazon. I do buy from Mountain Rose Herbs for elderberry, but generally when they're on sale, they usually have a sale once or twice a year. And then I really stock up on these. I buy probably five to 10 pounds at a time. I really go through this really fast with making my elderberry syrups and then also the elderberry um, syrup quick kits that I sell. These are but I, I definitely like the half gallon um, mason jars for these. Elderberry is probably the most common herbal cold and flu remedy, and that is because it is phenomenal at treating viral infections such as colds, flus, even herpes and shingles. And while they're also used for treating upper respiratory infections, there is also some research showing anti-cancer properties as well. And they can also help lower fevers by inducing sweating. They also have lots of vitamins and minerals, including vitamin A, C, iron, and potassium. Lavender. If I open this bag, it smells heavenly. This is, I did a video about this as well on how to make an herbal oil. This is the slow way of doing it. This is um, olive oil that the lavender is in. It's been sitting, I have the date on here since October. I should strain this and, and store it back up in. I should store this and put it back up in my cabinet just to make sure that it's kept long. Busy mom life, I haven't had a chance. And honestly, it's just pretty. <laughs> but I am growing a bunch of lavender in the back. So I really, I, I haven't bought any because I'm just going to harvest it this year. Um, and then I'll just store it in my own containers. Lavender is a beautiful aromatic herb and is best known for its relaxing properties. It relaxes the nerv nervous system and eases tension and anxiety. It has been shown to be effective as a mild antidepressant and have mild analgesic effects. It can help ease he headaches and migraines and the essential oil can be used for antifungal and burn remedies. It can also be applied directly to the skin to treat ringworm and nail fungus. Chamomile. I have actually been having trouble growing chamomile, so I actually went ahead and bought this, but I do have some growing, just not enough to really harvest for long term, more for like just picking to make a tea with at the time. This one's almost gone. As you can see, I have a very big bag to get through, so I'm not worried about um, harvesting this year. 
Chamomile is most commonly known to many as a tea that aids in relaxation. It is a mild sedative and a good gastric anti-inflammatory. It does calm nerves, settles the stomach, and helps expel gas. It is very good for use in infants and children as a tea to treat colic, hyperactivity, teething, fussiness, fever, or even irritability. It can also be applied topically for inflammation. This is definitely an herb to have in your garden. Peppermint. I am not really able to take peppermint right now, so this is kind of just sitting here. I do have my peppermint trees in the back, but this, you can use the peppermint, obviously, for teas and stuff like that. This is a very easy one to grow in the back. It's actually like a weed. It will, it's a bully, as other people say. It will take over where you're doing it. Definitely recommend putting it in a little container to contain it instead of letting it spread everywhere. But this is another one that I recommend having. Peppermint renews, refreshes, and energizes while also soothing effects on the nervous and gastrointestinal systems. Needless to say, peppermint is a versatile herb and is widely used in products such as toothpaste, mouthwash, and chewing gum. It is also an antispasmodic and helps settle the stomach, reduce stomach cramping and spasms, expel gas, antiemetic, diaphoretic, and mild palliative effects on colds and fevers. Calendula, I have two of these bags. Mm -hmm. I go big or go home. And I bought this a long time ago before I was growing calendula. Now calendula grows, reseeds, and just keeps growing and growing and growing in my yard. So I have been utilizing what's fresh as I need it, but then I have these to really get through. I have a lot of salves that I make, and this is always the base of my salves. So I'm constantly making herbal oils with this. Calendula is very commonly used topically in salves for healing tissues after injuries, burns, and bruises. It is also a useful remedy for dry skin, eczema, and hemorrhoids and can ease mild pain. Less commonly known, it is great for GI inflammation and is almost specific for Crohn's disease, colitis, and gastritis. It has healing effects with promoting cell repair and growth and it is also noted to be antiseptic and anti-inflammatory and able to help prevent infections. These are the main herbs that I always have in my house and generally growing in my garden. I do have a lot more that I recommend you have on hand, but these I would say are the basic, basic, basics. Plantain is a valuable remedy for bruises, insects, bites, and injuries. When applied topically, plantain is used internally for ulcers, inflammatory bowel disorders, and coughs. California poppy is in the same family as the opium poppy and has mild sedative and analgesic properties, but is not a narcotic. It can help to normalize nervous system function to ease nervous tension, anxiety, insomnia, and pain. Lemon balm is used for many acute ailments such as colds, digestive upset, and the flu. Licorice root is a very strong mucosal anti-inflammatory used for esophageal and respiratory inflammation. It can ease dry coughs and sore throats. Mullen leaves are most commonly used for respiratory complaints. They have a soothing, hydrating effect on the lungs and contain saponins that loosen mucus. It is often used for chronic lung problems such as asthma and COPD. Nettle is a very nourishing herbal food that is rich in iron, calcium, magnesium, protein, and other nutrients. This herb can help you build healthy bones, blood, joints, and skin, and it helps not only with anemia, but also with low blood pressure and general weakness. This is a must-have herb for pregnancy and postpartum. Oat straws are rich in vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants that support nerve function and regeneration. They can contain compounds which have anti-inflammatory effects and may help reduce nerve pain and discomfort. Rose hips strengthen capillaries and are rich in bioflavonoids and vitamin C. They are helpful for colds, are anti-inflammatory, antibacterial, and astringent. Passion flower is a relaxing nervine and sedative. It is often combined with other nervines to help reduce stress and tension and to help with sleep. It can help quiet your mind, restless agitation, and exhaustion. St. John's Ward is well known for its mood enhancing properties, but it also possesses analgesic and anti-inflammatory effects that can benefit nerve pain sufferers. <music> Ashwagandha is a nervine and an adrenal tonic that helps anxiety, depression, exhaustion, and poor muscle tone. It is an adaptogenic and reduces the effects of stress while promoting energy and vitality. It is also an effective anti-inflammatory that can relieve pain symptoms associated with arthritis. 
Now that we've gone over the best herbs to start your cabinet with, let's go over how to prepare your cabinet and what type of cabinet you're going to be needing, or at least what kind of space you're going to be needing. So every space obviously will be different and can morph over time as your herb stash grows and your needs change. I started off with a black cabinet that I kept in the garage even. It's changed places over the years but now as you can see I have some in my kitchen and then I also have some in my pantry and you will also notice that I have some in glass jars which is ideal and then I also have some in those plastic containers and then I do still have to keep a lot of my herbs within those plastic bags these are salves that I have made and these are just aluminum canisters in different sizes these are what I like to keep mine in for my business and the ones that I keep generally if I make a big enough amount is in glass jars. Storing your herbs in a cool dark place is what you're going to want to do especially if you want to keep them for long term. Um, if you're going to be using them up relatively quickly they can probably just stay in their plastic bag however it's it really is not ideal so I typically have been sorting through them and as I accumulate more glass jars which let's face it they can be expensive I am switching them over so like I have mentioned before you just want to make sure that when you are going through your herbs if you are refilling it you, that you are cycling through. You're not just gonna keep adding herbs on top of herbs and never getting to the ones on the bottom. For this one, I do use elderberry very, very often, so I know that I will get through it, but typically you wanna make sure that you're getting through the entire jar before emptying another batch of herbs into it. And it probably goes without saying, but you need to remember to label your herbs, especially if you're making tinctures and salves with it. You want to put what you put in it and the date, especially with like herbal oils as well, because then like with my herbal oil that's lavender, I know that I really need to get to filtering it out sooner than later. And then you also just want to know exactly what is in those containers because you may think you'll remember and you just may not. So when you're going to be harvesting your own herbs, you're going to need some something to dry them. You can just hang them upside down if you cut them in the morning and wrap some twine around them and then just kind of hang them from a hook in your house. If you need to do it faster than that, then you can use a dehydrator like this. Just keep it on the lowest setting. So here I'm going to show you how I make my elderberry syrup. This is on a large batch quantity so and I do have the actual recipe on my blog pioneerhealthhomestead.com and I will also link it below this is also in my free herbal recipe ebook that you can get on my blog I just wanted to show you a quick way to make it because I know sometimes making syrups and tinctures and herbal oils can feel intimidating to a lot of people but it really is very very simple and you probably have all the material that you need at home just a strainer a pot and you know a bowl and then you'll just need some sort of container to put it in when you're done and you'll see this is just beautiful I love the way that this smells my kids come in from outside and they're like oh mommy's making elderberry syrup and I just love it. This is definitely a staple in our house all year round. Maybe not as much in the summer months, but definitely during the cooler months we are using this quite a bit. So one of my tricks is you'll see that I did just use a mesh strainer and now I'm going to add another mesh strainer and I'm going to do it again because you may have seen the little bits right there that are still floating in it. So it is nice to double strain your syrups with when you're using herbs you can do this with tea as well 
I just, it's something that bothers me. If there's too much sediment, there will always be sediment, but that is just one of my little tips for you. And then the honey, you can add as much honey as you want. You really could add, you know, one to one ratio of honey to syrup, but I have found that that is just way too sweet. So I usually do about a third, but again, it's to taste. And then you're just gonna kind of mix it in you want to do this when the syrup is still warm but not too piping hot that it's going to kill the raw raw honey organic properties and you just want to kind of mix it in if you wait until your syrup is cool it's not going to mix as well if at all and it's just not fun to try and incorporate together you may have to reheat it a little bit on the stove and i just that's a lot of trouble for me <laughs> i don't like doing that so just wait for your syrup to cool down and then add it to the honey and mix it up that way. I did just start making elderberry syrup quick kits that are available on my storefront at pioneerhealthministry.org. I'll link it below, but it's basically all the ingredients you need minus the water and honey, and you don't have to worry about measurements. I do all of that for you. Please make sure to consult with your healthcare provider, whether that be a physician, naturopath, herbalist, someone that knows your medical conditions, if any, and your health before starting any herbal remedy, other than using herbs for culinary purposes, um, because herbs can have very strong reactions to medications like St. John's Worts with SSRIs. They can have issues. Sometimes things can, herbs can even have um, conflicting outcomes with birth control, things like that. So you just, you want to make sure that you're talking or at least researching to you the best of your ability. If you don't have somebody like that to make sure that what you're wanting to take for whatever reason, for a medicinal reason, that it's not going to counteract any potential medications or ailments that you may have. Not everything is safe just because it's an herb. Um, medication is derived from plants originally things like Arnica. So you always just want to make sure that you're utilizing it properly and safely. So the books that I've shown you, make sure that you read up, make sure you take a class, make sure you're just not doing it willy nilly. It is and can be potent. It's not something that should be thought of as always safe no matter what. And so for instance, like for me, having been pregnant recently and breastfeeding, I have to make sure that I'm not taking something that can potentially harm my child through the milk or that can actually harm my supply or anything like that. And same thing when you're pregnant, you wanna make sure that if it crosses the placenta that it's not gonna harm your child. Now, herbs are typically more safe than medications. They're more cost-effective, but it's just something you wanna make sure that you're keeping in mind. Herbs does not me mean that it's always, always safe. Please speak with somebody that you trust before taking them medicinally. If you go to my blog, and I'll link that down below, there are many, I did a series on best herbs for, and I wrote down like warnings, allergic reactions, things like that to herbs. And again, books is also a really good resource, but if you want a free resource now, my blog, I do have several up there for that, including like best herbs for anxiety while breastfeeding. Even if you're not breastfeeding, they're going to be safe for you. So you can still utilize that. Um, and same thing, like if you're pregnant, I have one on there. I have one for um, the lymphatic system, stuff for like detoxing, everything like that. And I do put in there because I'm very conscientious of breastfeeding in pregnancy. I do try to put that in there, but still please do your research and make sure because sometimes there is conflicting within the herbal community. And I do try to put that in my blog, but I can miss stuff. I am human. <laughs> I could really go on and on and on and on about herbs. I really hope that you found this helpful or at least a good jumping off point to get your toes wet, get in, you know, get going with it. You have probably have more than half of these herbs in your kitchen already. You just didn't realize that it is possible to use them medicinally. Just you're going to be using a lot more than you would when you're cooking with them, or you may already have them, have them in your garden and you can start utilizing them that way. Head over to my blog. I have a lot of stuff on there. I even have some more um, quick tutorials in my YouTube channel here under the, um, blog tutorial <laughs> playlist I'll link it below but I have um, on how to do an herbal oil whether it's the slow or fast way I have 
um, how to make elderberry syrup, things like that. And then if you go to my blog, I do have a free um, recipe, herbal recipe guide if you wanted to download that. If you like this video, if you found it helpful, please like and subscribe and let me know in the comments what is the most interesting to you, what you feel like you're going to start with, where you're at. Just let me know how I can better serve you in further in upcoming videos. Thanks.